Hello, I'm Chris Rakakis from the MIT Computer Science and AI Laboratory and the SIMO or Open Source Organization. And what I want to talk about today is causal versus acausal modeling. Um, this is a topic that we've talked about a lot with the modeling toolkit and a lot of these Julia tools built around acausal modeling. But I think that we haven't had a very high level, you know, why you want to do acausal modeling over some other approaches. So I wanted to bring this to, to something that's very easily digestible. Um, now, the way that we normally talk about causal versus acausal modeling is like this, which I'll say is not too digestible, right? There's, you know, the, the, the key behind, you know, the key reason behind all of it is that, you know, for causal modeling, um, you know, it's used in a lot of software packages today, and it's what many engineers have learned. But the difficulty with causal modeling is that when you have to extend a model, you have to re rewrite a lot of these pieces, and there's numerical stability issues and slow simulation and so what we talk about a lot is, you know, acausal modeling, you know, removes this by letting you, you know, better do model reuse, you know, better reuse models, uh, more quickly build large models, uh, get better numerical stability and compute performance. Um, but I, I think that this, this like one slide does not do it justice, right? So, you know, there's many sources on that have shown this to be the case, right? So I put some of these course, sources down to the dot, bottom right. And so, you know, you can believe it at face value that, you know, a causal modeling is, you know, more efficient in human time, right? You can even see that one of the sources is called labor, uh, he, uh, labor for humans or labor for machines. Um, you know, where a, a causal modeling is essentially shown to take less labor to build. But, you know, I feel like this high level does not necessarily do it justice. So what I want to do instead is show by example why these tenants are true and why you want to be doing a causal modeling. And so in terms of the show it, don't tell it, I'm going to do a few, uh, an example where I take one model, I build a causal model of the RC circuit, and then I want to extend it to the RLC, RLC circuit, right? And what I want to show with this is why, you know, even causal modeling libraries that do have a bit of circuitry, a lot of them actually special case the circuit components, so that way you don't have to build in a causal way. And there's a very clear reason why, right? So, so circuit diagrams actually end up being um, one of these kind of worst case scenarios for causal modeling. And so let, let's let's actually figure out why. So let's look at the RLC circuit or the RC circuit, sorry. Um, you know, if you know your your basic uh, physics of, of circuits, right? You have uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, which means that the voltage of the you know, is in, the voltage in every in every uh, loop has to be um, has to to sum, right? So this means that the voltage of the resistor plus the voltage of the capacitor that has to equal the voltage of the um, of the source, right? So the voltages along the the loops will sum to zero. Um, now the other the other piece here is that uh, you have Kirchhoff's current law, which means that the the current in the resistor and the current in the capacitor have to be equal because they're connected, right? So any connected components have to have to share the, these currents. Um, and then what you have from your other physical equations is you have your device equations, right? That V equals I times R, right? So that's uh, that's Ohm's law. And then you also have the capacitor equation, which is that um, you know the the current in the capacitor equals it is proportional to the volt uh, the differential of the voltage in the capacitor, right? So that gives you a differential equation. So these are your basic physical equations, right? You know, Ohm's law, capacitor equation, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law, and together these define how the RC circuit evolves, how it, how the current and the and the voltage in the system evolve over time. But to actually get this to be a simulatable model can take a bit in order in any case causal model. So let's let's actually look at you know something that's pulled from. Uh, this is actually a pretty standard homework problem in you know in mechanical or electrical engineering spaces, right? Take this RC circuit model and build a causal uh, causal modeling diagram from this circuit, right? So let's do this uh, all the way through. So. So we have our four equations, right? We have uh, Kirchhoff's laws, and we also have our device equations. And what we want to do is we want to find what the differential equation would have to be. Well, the way that we do that is we isolate our differential equation term, right? So I, uh, the current in the capacitor, we divide it by the capacitance. Um, like, you know, so that's this top right equation divided by capacitance. And so then the next piece here is, well, if the, the two currents are equal, we substitute in. 
Now, the next thing that we do is we uh, use our, our uh, Ong's law. We substitute that in. Now, what we do here is we isolate for VR. We substitute this in. And finally, we get an equation um, here, which is our, our differential equation for the, uh, the voltage in the capacitor, right? And, and so, you know, the, the key here is with the, with the causal model is that we kind of have to derive, well, you know, the, what is the voltage in the capacitor? How, what's, how, what's changing it? Well, the current in the capacitor and the, the capacitance. And then what's changing the current in the capacitor? Well, it's the current in the, in the resistor, right? So we have, to, we have to kind of derive all the way back to this voltage source, which is really giving and which is really driving this equation. Um, and now when we want to build the, this current, this causal diagram, right, what we need to do is we need to represent these equations in a way that's, uh, that's simulatable by causal diagram um, simulators. And so what we do here is we say, well, um, you know, we have to have this, uh, this, this integrator, right? So what, what, we, what we do is we sum, well, let, let's take a look back at these equations, right? We want to sum V and negative uh, V, or V and negative V, the voltage of capacitor, right? Then we divide it by RC, and this gives us the value that it, of our ODE, right? So we take V and negative of, so this will be VC, right? So V plus negative VC is here. We divide it by the, the, um, the, the, the value RC, right? And then this gives us our equation here. So this defines a diff differential equation for what VC is. And so when we integrate the, the value over here, we get, the, we get what VC is. And so that's why we put this integral here, right? So if you've, if you've, used, a, if you've used a causal modeling diagram, so this is your standard way of, of setting it up, right? So here we have an adder where we have, um, you know, in our adder, we have a, a plus and a minus. Um, we have an integrator, which is going to take the equation for VC uh, VC dot and turn it into VC, and then we have our gain, which is just going to be the division by the by the constants, right? Um, that we define our voltage source, and then we connect all these pieces together, um, right? Just as the diagram shows. So so it's not too difficult, right? Um, but it is something that requires manual labor to go from the device equations and Kirchhoff's laws and all that, and get something that is a simulatable representation of the RC circuit. Right, and I want to note here that this is actually all shown in uh, in a, in the modeling toolkit a causal modeling language, right? Because a causal modeling languages are a superset of causal modeling languages, so you can always do the causal modeling form inside of it if you so wish. But now I want to show what the a causal model looks like for the RC circuit. What we do here is now we say, okay, we take a resistor, we take a capacitor. Uh, we have a voltage source, and we then connect all these pieces together. We also need to make sure we connect ground, right? So we just build our, our different pieces, and we build a hierarchical model that is done by connecting together these components, and it will kind of magically build the correct equations to be able to simulate here. That's definitely a lot easier. In, in a little bit, I'm going to show you exactly how this works under the hood to understand why you know this is a, an equivalent model even though it is much, much simpler and much closer to the physics. So to really, under, before I get to that, though, I really want to dive into, you know, how do we then extend a causal model to a more complicated case? So here, for example, now we take the, uh, the causal model of the RC circuit, and we, and we change this to be the causal model for the RLC circuit, right? What do we do? Well, we still have Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law, but notably, Kirchhoff's voltage law is a summation of four things instead of three things now because we have the uh, the inductor inside of the uh, same loop, right? So Kirchhoff's current law, we just had add another equality in here, but Kirchhoff's voltage law is a fundamentally different equation because there's a new term in the summation. Um, the only new device equation that we have is the inductance equation, but you know, so it looks rather similar at face value, right? But now let's actually do the the some of the math here, right? So I'm not going to do all the substitutions out by hand like I did last time. But if you if you basically substitute this around, right, you can find that your fundamental equations are these two ODEs, one for the voltage of capacitance or capacitor, and one for the inductance, right? And um, now the 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 issue here is that. None of these two equations 
showed up before, right? So if we, if we go all the way back here, right, we'll see that the voltage of the capacitor, you know, was a function of the voltage source minus VC divided by RC, right? The issue here is that VC is a completely different equation in this case, right? And so is I. And so when we actually go to create this model, we need to, you know, write this whole thing out basically from scratch, right? So uh, what does this look like? Well, similar to before, we have this adder where this adder is going to take in what uh, V. It's going to take in this will be this branch will be I, and um, this branch right here will be um, will be V C, right? So how do we then compute this? Well, we 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 take the value uh, we take the value of this add, right? We divide it by L. Um, the, uh, we divide it by L. That gives us I when we integrate it, right? When, di when we divide by uh, when we divide I by by C, then we integrate that. We get VC, right? And that's what su summed into here. And then when we take uh, the the I equation, um, when we take the I equation, multiply it by R, that gives us a term that subs in here, right? So this is this uh, causal diagram for this calculation, but. Of course, this is something that is kind of non-trivial to derive, right? We, we, in order to get here, we have to do a bunch of algebra to be able to, to get down to what our constituting equations are. Not too hard, but you need to make sure you make all the right simplifications and make sure you get to something that has your, your original voltage source. Um, but the other piece here is, well, once you do all that, you need to make sure you connect it correctly. It's if if we give you the solution, it's a bit easier to get there. It did take us about fifteen minutes to really make sure that we got all these pieces right. Because you know what we what you have to do is you define your adder of three components. Um, you have to have your gains right that that change things by your constants, and you have your two integrators. So your the value that, that takes uh, this branch turns it to I. The value that takes this branch then and turns it into V C right. Um, then you have to connect them all according to the diagram. And, and so really making sure that you get this entire computation correct is kind of non-trivial because, well, you have to, you know, when putting in this, this branch here, meaning making it to be I, then defines the branch for VC. So you have a lot of interconnected components in here. If you're to change the where you put this gain for L, if you try to move it into another part of these components, then you have to change other branches around as well. There's a lot of non-locality that is required to understand to get the causal model correct. Right. But what does the, the RLC circuit look like in an A-causal uh, model diagram? Right. Uh, well, this is just we, we have a resistor, capacitor, inductor, source, voltage source, ground. We say what, it, what to connect, right? We connect the positive part of the, the voltage source uh, the positive part of the voltage source to the uh, to the positive part of the pin of the resistor, negative pin of the resistor to the positive pin of the uh, uh, inductor, etc. This you know just we list the connections and this is our our system. Human time to create this was about one minute, right? So it's a major difference in the complexity that it takes to build the model. And note that you know the, this is actually with the same modeling language, right? This is the same model in the same modeling language because a causal modeling languages are able to build and represent models in the causal form. It's just much easier to do it in the a causal form, even though you can do the causal form, right? And that's really the, the point that's put here. And, and so I think that what's really interesting to look at here is, you know, how did the models evolve? So as we went from the, the RC circuit to the RLC, um, what actually happened to our model, right? And so the, the key that I, that I was pointing out is that the, the code for the causal model is almost entirely different, right? And, and, and the core reason is because the way that you compute VC, the voltage and capacitor, you know, because it now goes through the, the inductance here, it's completely different than what happened in the, um, in the, uh, in the RC circuit. And so everything about how you, you build this branch here is, is different, and so you have to go and redo a lot of your model, right? And so you have to change your adder to an add three, you have to, you know, have different gains, all of the, all of the gains are different from before, um, you have to have a new integrator, and all of your connections are different, right? Because you have a different causal connection between your components. The, the, um, voltage of the capacitor is only a function of one piece, and so it has to branch out from the summation differently than our previous way of, of uh, calculating. And so the, co the, the real big issue with causal modeling is that when you start to extend models, in many cases you have to 
redo a lot of the model. It's not really a local change, even if you just add a component to one small piece, right? Now with the A causal model, um, the, the differences are much more exacting, right? So we said we want to add in an inductor, so we add an inductor there and we say, okay, well, it goes right here. So the negative pin of the resistor goes to the positive pin of the inductor. The negative pin in the inductor goes to the capacitor, and there you go. This is the the growth of the equations, and so this is this is why you know all this these different research articles they, they express you know that they've done all these different surveys of experts showing that you know building large causal models is harder than a causal et cetera et cetera. But I mean, you don't need to focus on research survey outputs to understand why. Th this is this is why right here right that you know. The A causal model is, it allows you to specify these components in such a way where you have isolated uh, connections, and the connections, uh, the connector semantics ta really takes care of all of the difficulties. So, what I want to kind of describe now, bef before we, we're done, is how did the A causal model work, right? So, the A causal model is very clearly a lot less work to the human, right, than having to build out the causal model, even in the same modeling language, right? So the A-causal form is just a much simpler way of, of building models. And so what I want to describe, it, you know, now I want to describe is how the A-causal model worked to be able to achieve the same goal in the end, right? And so the A-causal modeling, if, as you can tell, you know, everything was about, you know, everything was in the connectors, right? We just kind of said, you know, take your, your resistor, your capacitor, your inductor, and then just connect them, right? So all of the interesting bits about hey, how a causal modeling works and how it is, you know, very efficient is in the connector semantics. So here, this is how the connector for, um, for electrical systems is defined in modeling toolkit. Uh, so this is actually code directly from the, the tutorial and from the modeling toolkit standard library. And so, you know, check out the tutorial in more detail if you want to walk through this more. Um, but what we do here is we say, okay, we have this connector, right? And this connector has two variables in it. You have the the uh, the voltage of your connector, and you have your the current of your connector. And we're going to say that these two uh, these two variables connect differently, right? The voltages connect in the standard way. What does standard mean? It means that if you make a connection between two pins, your voltages should be equal at that point. That's equivalent to a way of writing down Kirchhoff's voltage law, right? So uh, that's you know that uh, that that's uh, the first set of equations. Now the second thing thing that is true is that your currents uh, connect in what we'll call a flow way, right? Where what we do with flows is we have that the sum of the flows or sorry, I mix this up. The the uh, the 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 currents um, will. Yeah, I actually had that correct. Yeah, so so the the way that the flow variables then work is that they when you connect two uh, pins, the flow variables will sum to zero, right? So you have different con connector types. Uh, these are only two connector types. There's other types like stream connectors inside of the modeling toolkit library, and you can read all about the different connector types. But the the key to an A causal model here is the fact that you know you have interestingly defined connector semantics. You have voltages and you have currents, and they connect in different ways. But you can have a pin that has a voltage and a current, and we connect two pins, it will know what to do with the voltages, and it will know what to do with the currents. So let's actually start to now build this up into something more. Um, so now, what, what's a one port, right? So each each of these devices are a one port, right? So the the resistor is a one port, and what is a one port? A one port is something that has two connectors. It has a positive connector and a negative connector. And what we'll say, and you know, not only that, but a one port has a voltage and a current itself, right? So what is the, the, the what is the voltage of what is the voltage on this resistor of this resistor? Well, the voltage of the resistor is the voltage drop through the resistor, right? It is the the difference between the positive and the negative voltage uh, on on the resistor uh, components, right? Um, now, what is the current of the resistor? Well, it's it's the sum of the 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 current through the resistor well, well the current through the resistor has to always be um uh just a single value right you you have just that the the current is flowing through here so whatever current you're measuring on one end has to be equal to the current that you're measuring on the other end which which means that well 
which means that you have you know the the two are summing to to uh, to zero, right? Summing to zero just means that you know we're defining current in here as positive and current out here as negative, um, and so the the current of a device then is equal to just what we say the the current of the the positive current here, right? So so a device itself is something that has a positive pin and a negative pin, and it has a voltage and a, and a current defined on it where the voltage is the voltage drop through the device and the current is the current that go, that flows through the device, right? So, so every, every device in some sense is one of these one ports, right? Every single device has two, um, two connectors on it and has a voltage and a, and, a, and a current. Now, what we want to do then is we want to say, well, you know, from this one port, we want to define what makes a resistor different from a capacitor, right? And so... The way that we define this this resistor is then we say, well, a resistor is a one port, right? So we want to extend it. So you know, you can see here that uh, that modeling toolkit and these A causal modeling languages have um, have these kinds of, of of inheritance and composition features you'd expect from programming languages, right? So um, the the one port composes two pins. It composes the P pin with the N pin um, to get you the the larger model, right? And now the resistor is an extension of the one port, which adds an equation into there, right? So remember that we have, you know, we have the, the how many variables does a one port have? Well, it has the voltage and, and the, it has the voltage and the current of the positive pin, the voltage and the current of the negative pin. It also has its own voltage and its own current, right? You know, the, this device itself has a voltage and a current defined by these pieces. Now, what we do to be able to find the resistor is we say, well, the resistor doesn't just have these as open equations. The resistor has to have that the voltage of this of this piece is equal to the current out there this piece times the resistance, right? Where the resistance is just some some parameter, right? So we take the one port equation, so a device with two connectors, and we say this thing must satisfy Ohm's law. And that is something that is a resistor, right? So we just extend the one port to be something that has Ohm's law. Now, what do we do with the capacitor? Well, the capacitor is an extension of the one port that satisfies the uh, the capacitance equation, right? So, so really, what we're doing when we when we build the these uh, these a causal components is we do this hierarchically, and notably, what we do is we just specify what needs to be true about a given component, right? We just say you know, what is true about a one port is that the voltage is defined like this, is that the current is defined like this. What is true about a resistor is that its, uh, is that its voltage and in, in current ha it satisfies Ohm's law. What is true about a capacitor is that its voltage and in, in current satisfies the capacitance equation, right? We're just specifying what is true locally to a device. And then what we do, well, the last the last piece here is we have to define what ground is, right? Well, ground is where you take a pin and you set its voltage equal to zero, and constant voltage is a one port system which which uh, which has a well defined uh, voltage where you uh, make that voltage be be a constant, right? Um, now all that we do when, when when we to finish the the a causal model is we take all the we build all these components we have right so we instantiate a resistor with some resistance we instantiate a capacitor with some capacitance we instantiate our, our voltage source with the here it's just the default uh, voltage we instantiate a ground and we just connect all these different pieces right and it's through the connections that we under have in a a system that that is understood in a way that can be simulated right so what what is actually the set of equations that's generated by this process well, if you actually take a look at the equations, right, um, it's actually fairly, it looks fairly, you know, large at first, but in reality, it's, it's not very difficult, right? So, you know, you can see that our device equations are all in here, right? So the ground, uh, the ground voltage equals zero. The, the, right here is the capacitance equation, right? We, we have that in there. Um, we have Ohm's law is, is encoded in one of these equations around here. Um, here's Ohm's law, right? The the resi the voltage in the resistor equals the voltage, uh, the 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 re uh, resistance in the resistor multiplied by the um, current in the in the resistor, right? So the, here's Ohm's law. So those are your device equations, right? And everything else is defined by connector semantics, right? So how uh, so remember that um, with the the currents you have uh, 
and you have that your your currents are, are equal at 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 places that that sum right because currents are defined as a flow variable and then your voltages uh, the voltage is summed to zero at any point that you have a connection so here you know let's let's take a look at one of these so you know here we have a flow variable um yeah, sorry, I did have a, a typo in these. Yeah, so the, the, here we have a flow variable, right? So the, here we have the connection between the uh, the capacitor and the resistor, and we have that the the voltage coming out of the uh, we have that the voltage coming out of out of uh, into the capacitor equals the negative of the voltage that's coming out of the resistor, right? So this is the the flow variable um, equation, and then you have that the um, then you have that the voltage uh, here, right? So here we have the voltage between the source and the resistor. These have to be equal, right? And the way that, that these equations are all generated is just by, by due to the fact that you are, we have correctly said that I is a flow variable, right? It's a value that's flowing through. Um, and so it has the, the equality relations associated with that and therefore satisfies Kirchhoff's uh, current law. Right. While the Kirchhoff's voltage law happens through the standard uh, uh, connections, which are done through equality. Right. So we have equality of, of we have equality of voltages in every connection, and we have uh, and we have summation of currents to zero at, at each of these connections. Right. And so you know this looks a lot more non-trivial than you know you're like wow the A-causal model actually is, has a lot more. But this is why when you have an A-causal modeling system like modeling toolkit. You tell it, hey, structural, simplify this. And when you get out of here, it's just one equation, right? So it says, hey, I understand the RC circuit model is actually just this one differential equation. And then when you set it, to, when you use modeling toolkit and you simulate it, it actually generates code for differential equations, not JL, which is just this one differential equation, and it solves that one equation, right? So, so structural simplification is really the thing that takes this whole set of equations and gives you the the causal model automatically, um, and you can actually see this in action. So if you tell it to to you know it, well, if you, if you tell it to uh, to give you all of your different uh, different equations, you can actually see that it, it gives you out you know you, you you can actually see that if I know the voltage of the capacitor, then I can construct um, the you know if I know the voltage of the capacitor, then I I know um, let's see. If I know the, vo the positive voltage of the capacitor, then I know the negative voltage of the resistor. If I know this thing, you know, so it has then a way to be able to eliminate all of these other variables and algebraically reconstruct any of them on demand. But that's kind of a detail under the hood. The real, the real thing is that this whole set of equations um, is this whole set of equations really just turns into one ODE by finding what the causal model is from the structure of these equations. And modeling toolkit is really a system that does this automatically for you. And so the conclusion here is that you know a causal modeling systems are you know simpler to extend, right? You if you have a model and you want to just add a new piece in here, you can leave most of your model intact and just connect something in there and not have to worry about changing other pieces, right? So it's they're simpler to extend. Uh, they're faster to model large systems because as you you don't have this this you know, lack of locality. And so unlike a causal modeling system where you might need to change some other pieces, you know, building a very large system can happen in a very, you know, isolated and, and component-based way. Um, they're more numerically stable. Uh, that's something that I'm not necessarily going to get into here, but you essentially what you can do is that this structural simplification is allowed to generate equations and there are ways for it to be able to understand whether a, a causal simplification is going to be um, numerically stable or not, and it will find the most numerically stable form. And so in a lot of cases, you'll have the simulation not just, a, you know, not, it's not just easier to build a large system, but also the large systems that you do build are more numerically st stable and easier to simulate, which also then turns into a lot of where the performance improvements from uh, a causal moment comes from. But I think that in, in the end, uh, some, some of the other things to kind of mention here is that, you know, they end up just being easier to read and debug, right? So, you know, it's not very easy to go back to this a, this causal model diagram and say, yes, this is the RLC circuit. I mean, if you walk through the derivation, you know, if you walk through the derivation, you can see that this is the RLC circuit. But it's not so obvious just looking at this diagram. And it's not so obvious that, say, if I add another integrator right here, 
what does that even mean? What equations does it correspond to, right? So it's not really clear from causal modeling diagrams um, unless you have the derivation next to you. It's not, they're a lot more difficult to interpret. And so they're much more difficult to read. And that also then turns into much, being much harder to debug, right? So with the A-causal modeling languages, it is, since you have a much simpler form and it stays much closer to the physics, it can be much, much simpler to debug the, the final model in the end. Right, so and then that's really the the key piece here. The a causal modeling is you know simpler, easier to read, easier to debug, faster to model large systems, more numerically stable, and then simulates a lot better for large systems than causal modeling systems. Now, I will say I will end this by saying that you know for some of these causal modeling systems, um, some of them have uh, a way that they've you know hard coded uh, the circuit components to actually work a bit a causally instead of causally because of these kind of workflow issues. Um, what we're doing with Julia's modeling toolkit though, is making a system which is open and um, easily hackable where someone can see the whole library through, through and through. And that is fully a-causal through and through. Everything about it is a-causal. Um, the standard library has all the components like integrators, gains, and adds to be able to build causal modeling diagrams. Though, uh, you know, and this is a good way, a way that we believe will help a lot of people first get into a causal modeling, right? Because again, one of the the big pieces of causal modeling is that this is what, the way, this is the way many engineers have learned. So, you know, if you're really starting to get into modeling toolkit for the first time, you know, you can start by translating models over using causal diagrams. It has, you know, these things are subsets of the a causal model. So, free, feel free to use it. All of these pieces, these predefined components, are defined in the um, modeling toolkit standard library, but you know, once you start to get more comfortable with modeling toolkit, we really hope that you take a look at some of these a causal features because in the end, they can be very helpful at helping you build much more uh, models much more efficiently that also simulate much more efficiently. So, you know, if you want to go to some sources that that talk about this in more detail, um, here are three sources: labor for machines or in labor for for uh, humans, right, and uh, modeling education, causal a causal modeling approach. This first one is is a, actually a survey which says, you know, hey, we've surveyed a whole bunch of, of experts in causal and a causal modeling, and this is what they say, that a causal modeling systems are just much simpler to use, right? Um, but I hope that this is a much better way of describing why that's the case, you know, because a survey result doesn't tell you why you know, a causal modeling is simpler, but I think when you see that, you know, a causal modeling is does the hard part of causal modeling automatically, and a causal modeling is something that's about hierarchical models with interesting connector semantics doing the work for you. I think that once you see all that, you see that you know, a causal modeling is really the kind of way that we need to be modeling it in the future. So yeah. Uh, thank you very much, and um, I hope to see you around the Julia ecosystem and uh, modeling toolkit. So thank you.